Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a roundup of all of my favorite things for spring. And I have a bit of everything, some beauty, fashion, fragrance, accessories, some miscellaneous items thrown in as well. It's been a while since I've done a monthly favorites video and I figured this was the best way to show you everything that I have been loving lately. I'm going to begin with accessories. I know I showed you these earrings before, I think maybe in a haul video. I haven't had many hauls either this year, but these have been one of my favorite purchases that I've made definitely this year but in a long time. They are these seashell earrings from Jennifer Bear. I remember I told you the story. I saw these in one of those Instagram ads and I very rarely succumb to the Instagram ad but they just followed me everywhere because I probably clicked on it a couple times because they're beautiful so they lured me in. I did a quick google search and I was able to find them on the Farfetch website and they were on sale which was even better. So they're still pretty pricey for costume jewelry but they're high quality you can tell and they are even more beautiful in person these are statement earrings so you can wear them with something a little bit more basic more casual and then this becomes the focal point of the entire outfit or you can wear them dressed up especially in Miami if you're going out for a night on the town something tropical where you're wearing a really beautiful dress and then these earrings are just the cherry on top anytime there's an opportunity to wear them I wear them. Next we have the perfect most ideal pair of spring summer sandals and they are brand new they're still in the box but I'm counting them because I did try them on already and I walked around the kitchen so I know they're comfortable. This was a purchase I made on sale from Saks Off Fit. Every once in a while I will open their emails and they had a sale on designer shoes but then an additional discount and that's really the only thing that will make me jump because I haven't been shopping lately. I haven't been in the mood but also there's nothing that I really need. My last pair of everyday sandals need repair so I was in the market for something else I could wear in the meantime and I thought these would be perfect. Go with everything. They're light, they're comfortable. They're from Alexander Bierman. I would say I'm pretty hard on my shoes only because if I find something that I love, I'm gonna wear it into the ground. I'm going to wear it until I cannot wear it anymore. And I think that's the best way to do it, especially if you're going to invest in a higher quality pair of shoes, something that you could theoretically get fixed and take to a cobbler. You wanna be able to get your money's worth and get wear out of them. And I didn't have anything that was white. I like that it has the leather upper part, so that way it's going to kind of mold to your foot a little bit and it has more of a block heel. I like height whenever I'm going out. I very rarely, if ever, wear flats. I'm 5'4", I'm not incredibly short, but I don't know, there's just something that gives me that boost of confidence when I put on some sort of heel. Doesn't have to be a pointy stiletto, but I gotta have something. But especially down on the beach, whenever there's events, you never know if you might actually have to step in the sand. It's nice to have something that's either a platform or just a block heel. So that way it will be a little bit more comfortable. I wanna say these were listed at three and a half inches. So nothing outrageous, but they will make your legs look a little bit longer, you know, if I wear these with a sundress or a flowy skirt something that's very easy breezy effortless i could even throw these on with pants white denim and a cute top for brunch fancy shorts basically anything any outfit that i would wear spring summer can be worn with these shoes just about let's see is the price listed so originally they're 600 dollars, and this little price tag right here says 238 but then i got an additional discount so i definitely paid under 200 for them but full price they're 600 bucks so i think that's a pretty good deal and like I said, they're high quality, they feel really comfortable, and they're going to go with absolutely everything. So I love, love, love this style. And it does have the little twisty ties that Alexander Bierman is known for. But if you like this style, but you're not necessarily looking for something designer, even on sale, Dolce Vita has an incredible collection. They have a lot of raffia, tan, mixed neutrals. I've seen so many beautiful designs. So I'm actually probably going to pick up another similar pair or at least a sandal style from Dolce Vita, a little bit less expensive. Actually full price, they're probably the same. 
as these. Now I really want to get into some fashion pieces including this beautiful silk blouse that I'm wearing right now. This is courtesy of Lily Silk who has sponsored a portion of today's video and I love working with Lily Silk because they have the highest quality silk pieces at affordable prices but the styles are really classic timeless and they kind of go with any wardrobe for example this beautiful navy and white striped blouse i love this because it feels really lightweight and silky on the skin it's very cooling for the hot weather but i think this looks a little bit nautical it's very chic this is one of their new styles for spring and i love this style so much i actually have it in two different sizes this is the extra small that i'm wearing today and it would pair beautifully with a pair of white silk trousers white denim you could tuck it in leave it tucked out white shorts. I think this would be beautiful. I also really love pairing an oversized button down like this with a swimsuit as a cover-up. And then we have this beautiful bright orange scarf dress. This is another one of their new styles for spring. I wore this recently to an event in Palm Beach. The event was a private dinner hosted by the founder of Nest Candles, Laura Slatkin, at her beautiful home. So I knew I needed to dress up but I also wanted to take into account the heat. I wasn't sure if we were going to be indoors or outside. It was a little bit of both, and this was truly the perfect outfit to wear because it was so flowy, it didn't stick to the body, and these colors, are, it's just such a standout knockout dress. Of course, we have the classic silk pajama. These feel so soft and heavenly on the skin. I wear mine all the time, and nobody does a silk pajama better than Lily Silk. In fact, they've done several collaborations lately where they have these gorgeous floral prints just like this one. I actually think this would also make a beautiful swim cover-up as well. Looks very glamorous over a swimsuit, but as a PJ, it does not get more luxurious than this, and I think a perfect pair of silk pajamas would be a great Mother's Day gift as well. Especially in this packaging, it's so stunning. I saved one of the boxes so we could open it together. This might be one of their most beautiful prints that I've ever seen. How beautiful is that? So this is the silk sleep shirt, and then here is the silk pant. These are truly the most beautiful silk pajamas you cannot convince me otherwise. The colors, the texture of the fabric is so luxurious. This would be such a beautiful gift. I love finding new ways to style these Lily Silk pieces. Their new designs are incredible. I love the burst of color this season, and I will make sure to link all of my favorites down below in the description box so you can check them out. Speaking of Nest, everybody who attended the event last week received this incredibly generous, very heavy goodie bag filled with some of the most delicious smelling candles, including the new Alfresco collection from Nest, which is really beautiful. So I want to share everything that's inside with you. Here we have one of the crowd favorites. This is the Wild Mint and Eucalyptus Reed Diffuser. This is from the Rattan Collection, which I believe launched last year. Those pieces look so beautiful. They were displayed all throughout her home. And I think I have a couple. Now that I've seen them styled, I feel inspired to display mine as well. This is the Wild Mint and Eucalyptus Scented Candle, also part of the Rattan Collection. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, let me go ahead and unbox this one so you can see. Usually I think the Nest candles are pretty minimal in design, but these come with this beautiful rattan holder. So it just looks very classy. It's very Florida, very Palm Beach. Ooh, and that smell. The eucalyptus and the mint is so nice. It's very peaceful, very calming. I feel like I'm at a spa. And now we are getting to the Alfresco collection. This is white tea and rosemary. Very beautiful. They naturally help get rid of the bugs and the mosquitoes, like a citronella effect. And then when you burn the candle through and you're finished, you can use the vessel as a planter. Or you can put flowers in here and just use it as a vase. So it acts as a decorative piece as well. So this is the giant five wick candle, again, perfect indoor or outdoor. This was used as a centerpiece on all of the tables and inside there were flowers and it looked absolutely beautiful. I would have never known that it was previously a candle had she not explained it to us. So that is the beauty of this Alfresco collection. And now we're getting into some beauty favorites. It's that time of year that I start to take my sunless tanning very seriously. And this has been my go-to combination. This is from Loving Tan. This is the 2 Hour Express Deluxe Bronzing Mousse. I have the shade Dark. 
and it does get darker than this, I think they have an ultra dark as well as a platinum. The biggest difference between them is really going to be, yes, the intensity to some extent, but it's the undertone. So I don't remember if it's the ultra dark or the platinum. One of them says olive undertone. I find the dark to have more of a warmer, more reddish undertone, which is actually a more natural tan on me because when I do tan naturally, that's the type of tan that I get. If you have olive skin, then you might want to go with the ultra dark or the platinum. Probably the ultra dark. I think the platinum is maybe for bodybuilders. But once you do your mousse and you can leave it on for two hours and then rinse it off if you're in a rush and you just need a little color. But I like to wear this overnight. So I'll let this sit as long as humanly possible. Eight or nine hours and then it is fully developed. Developed, and what I'll do is I'll wear long loose clothing so a pair of pants a long sweatshirt that I don't mind ruining that way it doesn't get all over the bed sheets this does have color to it so it will stain your sheets if you're not careful but because the mousse is tinted you can see where you're applying it so you can make sure that it's going on evenly it's not streaky and the mousses that are completely clear just aren't going to get you very tan that is a lesson that I've learned the hard way. I purchased almost every single luxury sunless tanner available. I tested them all a couple summers ago and the clear mousses just don't work as well. So you need something with a dark tint. It's just the way it is. So when I like to be really tan, I like to go in with this. I'm not playing around. And then to add a little extra color or to maintain between sunless tans, they also have the deluxe gradual tan. This smells incredible. It looks beautiful. It also has a light tint to it, but I can wear this daytime and it doesn't get all over my clothes because you really don't have to apply a lot. It's gonna moisturize the skin, so it helps to keep it nice and hydrated, so it keeps the tan nice and even, but it also has that really nice buildable color. So this is kind of the perfect marriage whenever you wanna go from zero to 100. Not only do you need a mitt, but you need the back attachment. This has saved me. If you don't have anyone to help you tan, this is the only way you're gonna get those hard to reach places on the back. You can see mine is stained and the foam is even starting to peel a little bit. It's probably time for me to get a new one, but this is just the most genius invention for tanning. And this right here is the other essential tool. I use this every single time I do my hands. This is just an old makeup brush. I think this is an old rougher brush. I certainly wouldn't recommend ruining one of your good makeup brushes, but if you have an extra or you wanna to go to one of the drugstores and pick up a very cheap brush, using this to tan the hands is a game changer and I know one of you made this recommendation to me and it just changed my world. I kind of thought, oh, I'm sure it'll work, but it's not going to really make a huge difference. No, it is the difference. If you have really bad sunless tan hands like I used to have every single time, it's because you need a little makeup brush. So what I'll do is I'll take a little extra mousse and I'll just kind of paint it on. You can get all of the little crevices all around the hands and then you want to blend around the palms as well. Anytime I use the makeup brush, no more crazy hands. You can also use it on the feet as well. My feet always look a mess. Nobody sees my feet. <laughs> and I almost forgot, but if you like to take things to the next level and add a little shimmer, this is a beautiful body cream. This is the Bronze Shimmer Luminous Cream. This gives you instant color and a little luminosity to the skin, which I think is beautiful, but it does have color. It will transfer if you're not careful. This isn't part of my tanning routine, but if I'm going out for the evening or if I have an event, I will also apply a little bit of this on my arms, on my shoulders, anywhere there that's not directly touching clothing. And you wanna be careful, if I was wearing a really nice fancy dress, something dry clean only that I didn't wanna stain, then I would just skip this part. It also helps to even out the skin tone a little bit, but it is very dark, so a teeny tiny bit is all you need. It has a very bronze, coppery tone to it, so beautiful. I received quite a few comments on my nail color recently, and I wanted to share with you because it's probably not what you would expect. It's this beautiful, kind of cool, neutral, taupey nude, I guess I would call this color. It's actually, it was an impulse buy from Sally Hansen. This is the Inch to Dry nail color in the shade 203 Buff and Tumble. I just happened to be running errands. I think I was at Target or something like that, picking something up and I had chipped my really fancy nail polish. I have been wearing to Tool from Christian Louboutin and I knew I needed to film something later on. I was creating content. I thought, okay, what can I buy really quickly so I can just paint on top and fix all of the chips? 
and I found this. I thought it was such a pretty color and I remember now why I love these so much because they really are so fast to dry. So I've been doing two coats of this and then I top it off with like a clear gel coat that's also pretty quick dry. But I love this color and the manicure lasts about a week. I would say quality wise it's the same as the Chanel or the Louboutin nail polish. I can generally get almost a full week out of my nails before I have to repaint them again. And then I do have a few other pieces of makeup to share. I know after the Sephora savings event everyone might be feeling a little inundated with Sephora recommendations but I have a few standouts here including this new Too Faced Born This Way Healthy Glow Moisturizing Skin Tint. I've been wearing this almost every single day, just about every single day ever since I tried it and I love it. It is so thin and lightweight. I love that it has the SPF 30, but I love the finish. Anytime I see moisturizing skin tint, glow, luminosity, it always freaks me out a little bit because I'm afraid it's going to end up being a greasy mess and I'm going to look like I have an oil slick on my face. But this has a pretty natural to natural matte finish which for the formula, I think it works out perfectly because it makes it a little bit longer wearing and makes it a great foundation to be outside, especially in Florida with the heat and humidity. I love the fact that it has SPF 30, although I wear such a thin amount, probably not getting the true benefit of the SPF 30, but I usually layer this on top of something else with sunscreen anyway. But I just love the way it evens out the skin tone. It feels really lightweight. Even when I apply every other step, every other part of my makeup process, it doesn't look like a makeup mask at the end. I absolutely love my Water Fresh Complexion Touch from Chanel, but I am almost done with that little bottle. And I would use that every single day if I could, if it wasn't so expensive. But on days that I want to switch off from that, I've just been using this because it kind of fills the same purpose. They're very different formula wise. The Too Faced is a great alternative on a daily basis. This looks more like makeup on the skin, even though it's very sheer. These Armani blushes are definitely a favorite, especially this one. I'm wearing it on my cheek today. This is shade 50. I think this sold out. It might be back in stock, but I love both of the shades I picked up. This one right here is 40. It's more of a bright coral gives that natural sun-kissed, a little bit sunburnt look. The formula is so silky and smooth and great color payoff. Another beautiful product from Armani. I knew I was going to love them and of course I do. I think everybody does. And then I have two other palettes here to mention. This one's for the eyes, this one is for the face. I love both of them. This one is an eyeshadow palette from Lancome. It's the number 18 Nude Sculptural Palette. I picked this up when they had a gift with purchase from Bloomingdale's a couple weeks ago and I love it. On the outside looking in it's just a boring basic neutral palette and if you already have a ton of neutral palettes then this is an obvious skip. But what I love so much about it is that it's mostly mattes. I really like how the tones work together. I think it these shadows are pigmented enough. They're kind of the perfect pigmentation and blendability. So it's just a very easy palette to use. I never struggle with it. And I've been playing around with all matte eyes. I have all mattes on today. It's just a look I've been doing recently, which is very different for me. I usually always have a little shimmer on the lid, but I'm kind of liking a little gloss on the lip, a glowy complexion, but all matte eyes. And this palette is great for that. It does have a little metallic shade in the middle, but I usually just use these over here. Sometimes I'll go in with this darker shade. This is such a beautiful eyeshadow palette if you're in the market for something neutral. And then this is the NARS Orgasm Foreplay Blush Quad. This is so pretty as well. You can use it on the face, the eyes. It's kind of the perfect size to take with you on vacation if you have any fun summer plans coming up. I love this combination of colors, how you have the lighter blush and then a deeper blush. And then this bronze color right here, it's really unique. This is stunning on the eyes. And I also really like the highlight shade. It's one of the cheek palettes that I think I will get more use out of this year. I have so many face and cheek palettes that I don't really grab. They just don't really inspire me. And usually it's because they have one or two colors that I know I'm not gonna touch. Whereas a palette like this, it's kind of compact enough. I know I'm going to use every single one of those colors. So it's easy to just throw in a travel bag beautiful. This is new this year, I believe, and I also like the pastel pink on the outside. 
Barbie Summer approved. And my final favorite is this hot tool from T3. This is the Switch Kit Curl Trio. It comes with the three best wands in my opinion. So this is the one that I used today. This is the one and a half inch curling iron. Then you have the one and a quarter inch wand, which is another really great one. But it also comes with the half inch wand, which is amazing for creating those really tight spiral curls. And I received so many compliments on my hair and I have to tell you, it is so much fun to wear your hair extra curly and the curls last such a long time. And every time I've styled my hair that way, I've learned something new. So this last time around, I learned that you don't have to use nearly as much heat. I think it probably has something to do with the surface area of your hair that touches the wand because you have to twirl so tight that I was using it on, I think five out of nine. I could probably use it on maybe two or three and it would still give a really tight curl, but maybe a little softer. And as the curls fall in the days after you style your hair, it just looks prettier and prettier. And even day five, day six, my hair was still incredibly curly and it adds so much volume to your hair because they're smaller pieces. So this is going to be my summer hairstyle. I'm still playing around with different curly ways to wear my hair, but I love this. This is like a Shakira in a hot tool. And then these wands give you that loose beachy wave that is really popular. Between the three wands that you get with this little kit, you kind of have everything you need to curl your hair. You can do something really tight, very loose, everything in between. I do have an ongoing promo code with T3. It's Aaron T320. It's 20% off all the time. So if you are in the market for any hot tools, hairbrushes, whatever you need from T3, you can always get 20% off with that code Aaron T320. I do actually have one more favorite to share, and this is pretty random. I don't usually review my camera equipment, but this camera has been so popular lately, and I've had it for a while. This is my vlogging camera. It's the Canon G7X Mark III. I never used to love it because for video, I find the autofocus to be pretty slow. I struggle to vlog with this. I've been using my iPhone actually a little bit more, but I saw people raving about this on TikTok for taking Instagram photos. So I've been playing around with it, and it actually is really good. I I took it with me to that Nest event and I'll show you some of the photos straight from the SD card. They came out looking so pretty for Instagram. The key is to force the flash in every photo, so I use this on the P mode for photo and they look really great. I can't believe I've had this for so long and I never used it for photos. I think it's a really great investment for anybody who's looking to get into content creation or to start vlogging. This camera is a really great deal. It is pretty expensive, it's a couple hundred dollars, but when I compare this to my Canon R5, it's a steal. You don't have to worry about lenses. It's great for a beginner, anybody who wants to just point and shoot. I bought this several years ago and it is still the latest technology. I think I've had one or two firmware updates, but I would say this camera is an incredible investment. And that's everything I have to share for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing about some of my favorite things. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you, so if you have anything fun and exciting to share, drop me your favorites down below in the comments section. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.